Welcome to Tech Links. From this to these, we look at object origins to better understand our lives today. This is the true tale about factories. Also, how tech connects from play soldiers to modern cars. Our story starts 2,000 plus years ago. At this time, China is a bunch of different warring kingdoms, each with a separate warlord king. This guy, Chi Chi Wang, wants to unite China under one king or emperor, him of course. He builds factories to hand make weapons like bows and arrows, spears and swords. His factories make enough weapons to equip his 100,000 soldiers. Emperor Qin conquers the whole country. He names the united country after himself, China. He likes being top king so much, he wants to keep it forever. He has a plan to rule in the afterlife too. He builds more factories to hand make 10,000 clay soldiers and weapons. It is because of these clay soldiers that we know about his ancient army. As for Emperor Qin, he drinks what he thinks is an elixir of eternal life. It has mercury in it. It slowly kills him. In China, factories continue to make silks and ceramics. China ships them all over the world. Chinese ceramics are expensive because they are shipped around the world. Next, people in Europe copy making clay ceramics. Later, in England, this guy uses science to figure out how to make his own ceramics at a less cost. He experiments what materials to use. Also, how to control oven heat consistently. He makes plates, dinnerware, and popular tea sets. He also makes these that he names after himself. Today, in the West, we still call clay ceramics China, after where they first came from. Next, at a time when most things like guns are made one by one by human hands, in France, this guy gets an idea. Painfully, he has gun parts handmade that are all the same size. This is called interchangeable parts. He puts on a show for crowds as he assembles random gun parts together. At least one person is impressed. He is the U.S. ambassador to France, named Thomas Jefferson. Suddenly, in France, the revolution happens. Heads roll! The French lose interest in Blank's idea. Mr. Jefferson, who later becomes President Jefferson, takes the idea of changeable parts to the USA. It takes years, but this guy makes 10,000 muskets. With help from water-powered machines, the handmade gun parts are nearly the same size. At this time, England is making lots of wooden ships to fight this guy. There is a problem. Not enough pulley blocks to move the cloth sails for the ships. This guy gets the idea to make a production line to make the wooden pulley blocks. This guy makes the machines. Next, 100,000 pulleys are made per year. Automation impacts people at the pulley factory. 10 people in machines replace 110 skilled workers. Next, based on the success of the pulley block factory, more machine tools are made. These machine tools make more machines. These machines enable cloth factories. These machines prepare the cotton. 
These machines, called spinning mules, spin threads. Other powered machines weave lots of cloth. Machines like these make products better and cheaper, but they cost the jobs and change lifestyles of cottage workers. Machine tools also make steam engines. Steam engines power machines and factories. The numbers of factories explode. There is a revolution of changes as workers move from farms in small villages to factories in crowded cities. This guy makes a factory to make hundreds of thousands of clocks. This guy builds factories to make sewing machines. Steam engines also power trains. Trains and rails are made in factories. Later, factories also build equipment to make and to distribute electricity. Electric motors power more machines and factories. This guy designs a simple but effective car after many tries. He calls it the Model T. Car parts are made all the same size. He uses machine tools and a moving assembly line to make lots and lots of cars. He pays his workers a fair wage. Workers can afford to buy the cars they make. In Ford's factory, 30,000 machines help people make 15 million cars in 20 years. Ford's efficient production line lowers the price of a car from $850 to $360. Soon, there are lots of factories that make cars and all kinds of other objects. Today, factories make almost all of our everyday things. Factories shape and bake clay ceramics. They cut and sew the clothes I wear. Factories process and pack the food I eat. They put together smartphones for my calls, selfies, and searches. Factories still assemble autos too. Aha! People and machines in factories make most of the objects around me. To close, wow! From clay to cars in seven steps. Ancient clay soldiers in China show us how early factories equipped huge ancient armies. Next, Chinese factories make lots of ceramics called China. They are traded around the world. Later, the English make ceramics. New science and production steps are discovered. Then, this guy demos interchangeable parts. But, guillotines stop production progress in this country. President Jefferson takes the ideas to the USA to make muskets. Then, England invents new machine tools. First to make pulleys for ships. Next, the powered, controlled machines turn tons of cotton into cloth. These are sold around the world. Later, the Ford factory uses machines, same size parts, and a moving assembly line to make millions of cars. With our modern factories, we connect where things come from to better understand our tech objects today. See the catalog for more Alfred books. Printed copies are also available on Amazon. Over 4 million free Alfred ebooks and videos have been downloaded. Subscribe now!